Tibiofemoral joint arthritis has debilitating effects, particularly for active middle-aged patients in which the conservative and biological procedures commonly used to treat monocompartmental arthritis have failed. There are many treatment options available for the handling of localised articulate defects. While unicompartmental and total knee replacement have become viable procedures in the treatment of osteoarthritis. The transition from biological interventions to joint replacement has not been well defined in the literature. In order to provide continuing joint preservation for knee arthrosis in active middle aged patients, a meniscal sparing tibiofemoral resurfacing technology was introduced into the market. Patient selection is a key point. The target patient is active and middle-aged, with a body mass index lower than 30, with medial monocompartmental arthritis, ligamentous stability, adequate medical alignment, and satisfactory meniscal function. The surgical technique encompasses an initial standard knee arthroscopy. Two standard accesses, anterior medial and anterior lateral, are made and the state of the articular cartilage and the meniscii is evaluated. With the knee in 90 degrees of flexion and valgus stress, the tibial template that best matches the anterior posterior and medial lateral surface curvatures of the tibial plateau is placed central to the damaged area. Maintain a bony rim greater than 5 mm around the implant in order to avoid compromising tibial plateau stability and the associated risk of reaming through the anterior cortex. A small incision is placed over the proximal anterior medial tibia, ensuring that the distal bullet is fully engaged into the cortical bone and the tibial template is parallel to the tibial plateau. A drill pin is placed through the center of the tibial template, defining the axis of the tibial tunnel. Care must be taken to maintain proper axis without excessive torque to avoid pin deviation. Once the tibial template, the tibial drill guide and the bullet have been removed, the tibial tunnel is made by driving the tibial pilot drill over the drill tipped pin. A small purette is used to protect the female condor. The tibial pilot drill is removed. The introducer is advanced into the prepared tunnel until the tip of the introducer is flush with the tibial plateau. Once the threaded blade stop is engaged on the blade stop driver, it is advanced over the introducer until it begins to screw into the bone. The introducer is removed and the blade stop is screwed until it is two-thirds of the way into the tunnel. The driver handle and the introducer are reinserted. The laser mark on the introducer must be in line with the laser mark in the slotted window of the blade stop driver. The blade stop driver and the introducer are advanced as one unit. The blade stop is at the correct depth when the tip of the introducer is flush with the tibial plateau and the laser mark lines on the driver and introducer are aligned in the slotted window. The tibial cutting blade is introduced through the anteromedial portal with the long slot facing posteriorly to the joint. The blade drive shaft is moved through the tunnel until it is visible in the joint. Push the tip of the drive shaft through the centre of the cutting blade. Connect the cutting blade to the blade drive shaft by turning the drive shaft 90 degrees and pull distally to engage the blade. Using a high-speed drill, initial counterclockwise rotation ensures an even cutting engagement into the plateau. Preparation of the tibial implant bed through clockwise rotation is completed when the cutting blade reaches the proximal end of the blade stop. With the cutting blade still in place, the appropriate sized sizing trial is inserted. Confirm anterior, posterior and medial lettering positioning. If the trial is proud at the margins, it can be lowered by adjusting the blade stop clockwise with a wrench. A 90 degree turn lowers the blade stop and implant floor by 1mm after re reaming The sizing trial, the drive shaft and the cutting blade are removed.
suture retriever is inserted through the tibial tunnel. The definitive tibial component of the correct size is placed into the tibial socket using the delivery tool, the suture and the suture retriever. Pulling down the suture retriever, the sutures are grasped and the definitive implant is placed in its socket. The blade stock is removed. Before implantation of the definitive tibial component, the femoral site is prepared. With the knee at 120 degrees of flexion and working through an anterior medial incision, the femoral drill guide is placed on the distal femur in order to develop a working axis perpendicular to the articular surface. A threaded pin is drilled through the central axis of the femoral drill guide. The contact probes are placed over the pin to take the preliminary anteroposterior and mediolateral offsets. Femoral centering shaft is driven over the threaded pin. The contact probes are placed over the femoral centering shaft to take the definitive anterior, posterior and mediolateral offsets. The appropriately sized central femoral rema is selected based on the average medial to lateral mapped offset. The central femoral cut is prepared by advancing the rema over the centering shaft. The centering shaft is removed. The femoral trial is temporarily placed over the threaded pin to select the appropriate size of the guide block. The guide block is placed into position. Once the pin sleeves have been inserted into the slots located on the top and bottom of the femoral guide block, two short threaded pins are inserted. Analogous to the central rema, the superior implant bed is reed, followed by the inferior implant bed. Both remas have a pin stop which is visible through the slotted window in the rema shaft. The appropriate female sizing trial attached to the sizing trial handle is then placed into position. With the female trial still in the correct position, advance the female pilot drill through the sizing trial handle and leave in place. Remove the handle and advance the female step drill over the female pilot drill. The tap is introduced and advanced on the female pilot drill. The tap and the female pilot drill are then removed. The taper post is inserted into the sizing trial handle and advanced into the bone with a hex driver. The prepared femoral site and the tibial component in site are evaluated. The final tibial implant is cemented before the final femoral component is implanted. The cement injector is advanced through the distal tibial tunnel. The tibial implant bed and tunnel are cemented under pressure. The tibial template is used to apply downward pressure onto the tibial component to seat it in its final position. Finally, pea-sized balls of cement are applied to the underside of the female component. The component is then applied using a specific impactor. The same tibial resurfacing procedure can also be performed through the arthrotomic axis used for the implant of the femoral component. Meniscal sparing is guaranteed also with this technique. The preliminary arthroscopy is useful in order to evaluate the state of the articular cartilage and minutia. In arthrotomic tibial resurfacing, it is advisable to first of all prepare the femoral site in order to gain a better exposure of the posterior portion of the tibial plateau. The tibial template is placed centrally with respect to the damaged area of the tibial plateau surface. 
The drill tipped pin is inserted through the central axis of the tibial drill guide until it reaches the center of the tibial template. The tibial pilot drill is driven over the threaded pin until it reaches the center of the template area. The threaded blade stock of the cutting blade is screwed into the bone. Finally, the cutting blade is connected to the blade drive shaft. The tibial socket is reamed backwards. The sizing trial is inserted. Anterior posterior and medial lateral positioning are confirmed. The definitive components are implanted. After surgery, the patient must use crutches for two to six weeks and proceed to full weight bearing as tolerated, while slowly weaning off the crutches. Range of motion exercises are started immediately after the operation. Strengthening exercises are also started immediately, depending on the levels of pain and swelling. Patients usually regain functional activities at eight to 12 weeks. Full recovery is achieved at three to six months after the operation. Between October 2008 and April 2009, Four patients underwent arthroscopically assisted knee resurfacing at the 6th Division of the Rizzoli Orthopaedic Institute. All the patients were female with a mean age of 54.5 years. The mean follow-up was 5.5 months, ranging from 2 to 8 months. The patients were evaluated preoperatively and at the maximum follow-up with the knee score modified by INSAR. All the patients were satisfied with the treatment received. The mean preoperative knee score was 28 points, while at maximum follow-up was 80 points. None of the patients required a revision of the implant. The literature reports a multicentric retrospective study on 48 patients treated with arthroscopically assisted knee resurfacing between March 2008 and January 2009 at three different institutions. 61% of the patients were female, while 39% were male. The average age at surgery was 54 years. The mean follow-up was three months, ranging from one to 10 months. Short-term follow-up at a mean of three months showed good to excellent outcomes based on surgeon and patient satisfaction ratings. Full weight bearing was typically achieved at eight to 10 days from surgery, while return to work was allowed at an average time of six weeks.